Welcome to People Tools Tech Tips. I'm Randy Gronke, and today we're going to talk about images in the Fluid UI. Hi, this is the third part of a series talking about images in People Tools. We've already talked about using design time images, and then user uploaded images. This is going to take those images and show you how to put them inside the Fluid UI. Now, this is not a intro to the Fluid UI and how to code for it. You will have to go other places for that. That's outside this scope. However, if you would like to jump ahead to sections of this video, they're up here and also and down in the details below. We want to talk about PeopleSoft guides and where to find more information about the Fluid UI and images in the Fluid UI. We want to find out how to use code references inside the existing PeopleSoft system that you can see how PeopleSoft applied these references and styles to images inside the Fluid. Then we're going to talk about the EM measurements and what that is. Finally, we're going to wrap up with code examples and some walkthroughs applying CSS, those PeopleSoft styles, to the, our images inside our Fluid pages. As always, all the objects you see here in our demo are available on peopletoolstechtips.com or our GitHub repository, People Tools Tech Tips. Oracle has a lot of good documentation out there on Oracle support about the Fluid UI, including UI standards and CSS styles. See the link here and also in the details below. The document we use most is the CSS Style Guide published in May of 2015. Unfortunately, it hasn't been updated since then, and some of the styles are a little bit antiquated and no longer used. We've tried to extract some of these and put them on a grid in People Tools Tech Tips of some image styles, some examples of how they were used in real environments, and some locations of where they're used inside of delivered people code if you want to be, be able to look at how PeopleSoft has used those styles. I found one of the best ways to learn how to use images inside the Fluid UI is actually to look at the examples Oracle has provided inside the PUMs of how they are using images with employee photos or what have you. Now, where all that information is, is the PS Panel Field EXT table that has all the styles applied to all page objects for Fluid. Now, you want to go in there and look for specific CSS rather than anything at all. But however, there you can find the, the page panel of field where it's used. And then you can look it up and see the situation of how Oracle has applied that to the page. Now, saying that most of that they use is just setting the height and the width, custom height width uh, styles such as max height, max width, setting the width in EMs and the height in EMs. Or there's also an auto where they're setting the height and they're setting the width to auto. That is the majority of everything they're doing with Fluid UI, and that's pretty much what we're going to show you today. Let's talk about PeopleSoft delivered styles and the size measurements. PeopleSoft works in EM elements. They don't work in pixels. Why? Well, pixels is an absolute size. If you're trying to scale your UI anywhere from small phone to a large desktop, and something is X number of pixels will be that same X number of pixels on all those displays. EM does scale with the display. Specifically, EM is a reference to the font size used at the element being styled. So if your font size is 10, at the element that you're applying your EM styles to, then EM at that 10, that one EM is equal to that 10 point font size. Okay, so if you say two EM, that's equal to 20 point and 1.5 and et cetera. Now, if your font size suddenly changes to like a 20 point, well, one EM is now that 20 point and all the other math works exactly the same. Now. Saying that, I saw some examples inside the delivered people code where they're saying with 3.8 EM. Be aware that the styles, CSS styles, and the F mode style sheet are not variable. There's not this middle variable that you can plug in any number you want. 
Generally, it's an integer between 1 and 15 in the EM. And each one of those 1 through 15 is hard-coded in that CSS style sheet. If you put in a number that is not in that F mode CSS style sheet, the browser won't have any idea what to do with that, that style, and basically your image will default to its natural size, whether that be big or small. So if you need specific sizes that are outside the 1 to 15 EM, you're going to have to have a custom style sheet that specifically says that 1.5, 3.8 EM, or whatever measurement is better for you in your custom style sheets. Let's start with a quick introduction to our demo app. This is a very basic fluid page with both design time images and user uploaded images. The gray image at the top is a design time or static image, a people tools image object. The grid is a selection of user uploaded images. Here's how that fluid page appears in the People Tools App Designer. Here's our static design time image. And this is the grid column holding our user uploaded images. Before we leave the page, let me point out that the group box containing the design time image. As in most fluid designs, the more the group boxes, the better. I prefer to do most of my styling in the group box as far as where the image will land on the page, padding, margins, outline, etc. The page image control itself contains the sizing information for the image. Here is our PS style def F mode style sheet, which has our delivered image styles. We see here that the EM size numbers are hard coded into the style sheet. When you see a style in the CSS guide that says it can range from 1 to 15, those numbers are integers, and they are all hard-coded into this sheet. The size number is not a flexible variable. If you need a size that is greater than 15 or contains a decimal such as 3.8 EM, that specific 3.8 EM style must exist in the style sheet somewhere, most likely a custom style sheet you can attach to your page. Our primary styles we are going to work with in this demo are image width, image width auto, image height auto, image height, image max width, image max height. First, let's look at setting the basic width and height of an image. Generally, it's best to choose to set the width or height to a specific size and set the other parameter to an auto size so that the image renders at its native aspect ratio. Our example is the large gray equipment static image at the top of the page. This design time image is being displayed at its native resolution right now. It's a little bit too big for our page design, and I think it'll work better if we shrink it down. Let's click on the static image control and look at the fluid tab on the properties box. We can see that it's not being styled at all. Let's put the PSC image width 5EM to set the image to 5EM wide, and also set the PS image height auto style to allow the height to stay in a portion aspect ratio with the width. Let's go back and look at our page and see the results. We can see that the image is much smaller and fits the UI much better now. Let's go back and set the height and let the width auto calculate. Previously, the width was 5 EM. Let's set the height to 3 EM and watch the width auto calculate. Go back and we see our image now is much smaller. The max height and width parameters are different from the width and height parameters in that they allow the image to display at its native size up to a specific limit. Well, why would you want to use a max size rather than force the specific size? One good reason is that small images do not scale up past 100% well. They often become blurry and pixelized since the original image just doesn't have enough information to display at a larger aspect. Look at this page here with our user uploaded images displayed at their native sizes. We have this huge logo, the same logo but much smaller, a medium sized image of a computer, and a small employee photo that is 25 pixels wide. Let's force all the images to a 5 EM height so they fit into the grid more uniformly. Here's our grid with the user uploaded image field. 
let's go to the Fluid tab on the Properties box for our image. We are forcing all the images to a 5 EM height. The width will auto-calculate. Seeing the results, most of the images look good. The large and smaller logos are now the same size as the image of the computer. However, our small employee photo is displaying at a much larger than its native resolution. It looks blurry and not at all clear. What we really want to do is to use a max height and max width styles with these images. We'll use a max height of 5 EM. You see here we put in the max height, not just the height style. If the image is larger than 5 EM, it will be limited to 5 EM. If the image is smaller than that 5 EM limit, it will allow the image to display at its native size. Refreshing the page, we see the large images are still squeezed down to a manageable size. But the small image is now much smaller. It's showing at its native size since that size is smaller than the 5 EM limit. I'm going to change the styles to max width to show you that works in the same way. I'll set the max width to 7 EM and let the height auto-calculate. Refreshing the page, we see similar results. The widths of the images are now uniform at the max size with the exception of the small employee photo, which is again allowed to display at its native resolution. So far, I've set either the height or the width to a specific measurement, but not both. Whichever height or width was set to a specific number, the other was set to auto. What happens when you set both height and width to a specific EM values? Unless your settings exactly reflect the image's native aspect ratio, the browser will skew the image presentation to meet the styling requirements. In most cases, this is not going to look good. Let's use our static image and set both height and width. Currently, the height is 3 EM and the width is auto. Let's change the width from auto to 7. Since this image is a 225 pixel square, this should really skew that image in the browser. Refreshing the page, we see that the image is really skewed wide. The natural aspect ratio of 1 to 1 is now bent to a 3.7 aspect ratio. Most times, this is not what we want. The Form Factor Override section of our Fluid tab allows us to style elements differently for different size screens. This is the power of the Fluid UI in that one page can change its presentation depending on the viewer's device. Here is our default desktop fluid page. It has a design time image at the top and decent sized user uploaded images in the body. Here's a look at an iPhone screen emulation. The page is the same as the desktop. Let's change this page to present differently to a small screen factor such as the iPhone. Let's turn off the design time image at the top when presenting on a small screen. It's not critical to the data and the user can better use the screen real estate. In the small text box under the form factor overrides, let's hide this image by applying the PSC invisible style. As for the user uploaded images themselves, they are set to display at a max height of 7 EM. Let's cut that way back to 2 EM max height when displaying on a small screen. Refreshing our desktop browser, we see there's no change in our page. Refreshing our iPhone browser emulation, we see the design time image has now disappeared and the user uploaded images are now much smaller. Just a note, if you visit our Images in PeopleSoft Fluid UI post on peopletoolstechtips.com, we added an appendix of the delivered primary image styles from the CSS guide at the bottom of the post. We tried to find a delivered usage of each image style in the HCM PUM. We also provided a delivered fluid page and field number in that page containing that style so you can review how the PeopleSoft team used that style. So this is a good start to using images inside the fluid UI. If it comes down to it, it's controlling your width and your height with a couple different styles. Thanks for watching. Like and comment below. And please consider subscribing to our channel to be alerted of whenever our new videos are coming out. And we'll see you next time here on People Tools Tech Tips.